Yeah, mom. No, the dirty bulk's going real good. No, I, I'm actually cranked it up a few notches. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually eating like 10 meals a day. The doctor said that it's actually healthier to eat like 10 meals. Yeah, that's good. I actually gotta go though because, yep, it is two o'clock. Time for my sixth meal. I love you too. Okay, okay, bye. the gains. Welcome to Demolition Ranch. This episode is sponsored by our friends, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is incredibly reliable and effective, a home security. You order it online, it's delivered directly to your door, and then you install it without a crew, without a team from Simply Safe. You install it in your house in under an hour. It's actually really easy to connect all of these devices together, and you can totally customize it to whatever you need in your home. Connect them all, and then you can check to make sure they're all connected and working. It is made to be so easy. Keypad, key fob. Simply safe on. That's your home base station. Oh. Video cameras, smart door locks, smoke detectors, motion sensors, glass break sensors, door and window sensors, water sensors, freeze detectors, panic buttons. No, don't, don't hit the red button. And video doorbells, just to name a few of the devices. I was first interested in Simply Safe because I wanted to keep my home and my family safe. And they make it super easy to do that with no hidden fees, no contracts. If you're not completely satisfied, you're not locked into like a two year contract or something like you are with other companies. And if anything happens, if a burglar breaks a window in the middle of the night or picks a lock and comes through your house in the middle of the night, it will set off the system, it'll alert the monitoring system and they will call the police, let them know there's something going on in your house that needs immediate attention. Thank you so much for Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. If you would like to check out more information about them, go to simplysafe.com slash demo ranch. Sorry for what you're about to see in this video, but it was pretty funny. Welcome to Demolition Ranch. You guys keep asking all these questions and we aim to please, we're here to deliver Demolition. You guys have asked me, Matt, how many giant cans of chocolate pudding does it take to stop a bullet? So we got like a million pounds of it here and we're gonna find out for you today. <laughs> In one can of this chocolate pudding, Poudine de Chocolate, made with non-fat milk, that's, that's good. Uh, there are 140 calories per serving, 25 servings, that's 35, I think 3,500 calories per can. With all the cans that we have here, we have 125,000 calories. And we're gonna shoot them. Welcome to Demolition Ranch. In classic Demolition Ranch style, we're gonna start out with a 22 long rifle going straight into the cans. I think it will not even go through one. I think it'll, I think it's gonna stop in the first can and not enter into the second. That stuff's so thick, it's not even leaking out or it didn't penetrate. It definitely, oh, wow. It went into two at least. Okay, I was wrong. It went into the second can, did not hit the back wall of the second can. Oh, it, it just warped the top too. This will be interesting looking when we shoot it with bigger rounds. We're not going to though. Just kidding, we, we are, we're gonna shoot bigger rounds. Going big this time, the 45 ACP. A big, heavy, slow round. I'm gonna say it will not go into the sixth can. That's my bet. Firing! Whoa, the bullet is on the table. That's the first time I've ever seen a bullet just fall out like that. That obviously went through the first can. Second can is also dented from pressure. Into the third can, out of third can, into the fourth, out of the fourth, hit right here and it looks like it just bounced. Look at this. Yeah, didn't even cut the paper. It dented it, didn't cut the paper. There's, there's a piece of bullet in my mouth. <laughs> Next up, we're doing nine millimeter and we've got these plus P 
jacketed hollow point rounds out of this little gun. We haven't showed this one in a while. A little suppressed nine millimeter AR. Uh, I think it's gonna do about what the 45 did. We'll see. Woohoo! Check this out. Slowly oozing out of this hole. That's crazy. And the top of this, look at this. All right, we need to throw this one out. It's pretty empty now, about half full. But oozing out of there. Oh my gosh, oozing out of several holes there. So this one's doing the same thing. Gross. Yep, there's definitely two big holes here from 9 and 45. That's the dent from the 45. That's a hole, so it was trending down. That's just splatter. So it was going down and it's still going. Okay. Came out the side on this? Did it go in this one? Where did that bullet go after it came out the side here? I guess it just flew out. I guess it just kind of, oh yeah. I think it just might have put it out of there. That's good. Mm. Next up, let's get some speed. We have a 300 blackout out of the Honey Badger. And we're gonna go at a new line, so we haven't shot any of these on the right. I'm gonna fire straight over there and see how far this 300 blackout goes. As you can see, speed does a lot. Okay, first one, straight through. Second one actually busted open way more, maybe because the bullet was going a little more sideways. That plopping down there. <laughs> the third one either got turned or, yeah, it must have just got turned. So, yeah, that's where it went in there and then hit here on the inside. You can see that dent. Oh, some of it came out here and then rotated it and dented there. Yeah, so hit right there, did not go in the fourth one. So interesting, those slower moving projectiles went further, just probably because that one had so much energy, it just lost it all in that first can, busting this second one open. Pretty interesting. So let's try that with something even faster, like a 5.56. Five, 5.56 six. Five, five, six out of this gun, the Fold AR. Check out how weird that is. There's one round loaded in there. It's very strange to see it like that. So it's not in a chamber, so if it was to set off right now, which I guess it, I don't know what happens if I close this bolt while it's open. It fires the round out on the ground. Now we know. <laughs> so the way you're actually supposed to do that is have the barrel back here locked in place like that. The stock back here locked in place. And then we are ready to fire. All right, we rearranged these. These are all good cans. Let's see what happens when a 5.56 hits them. Less than I thought. That's our entry hole right there. It turned it a little bit. This is our exit wound right here, plopping it out. Here is our second can, really big, which means that round was flipping. Small exit hole in this one, small entry hole in this one, and that's it. Our big rounds are not going very far at all. That is wild. I'm gonna take what we've learned so far. We know that the big heavy bullets are traveling a lot further and the faster bullets having a lot more energy and exploding the first cans. Let's do a big, heavy, fast bullet. This is a 50 Beowulf. A lot of powder behind that and it's a brass bullet so it won't start falling apart or anything. That brass bullet will hold together kind of like a penetrator. I'm gonna shoot it out of my 50 Beowulf Alexander Arms AR. This probably will throw ugh, a little bit of pudding everywhere. It did. So we hit this one right there, dead on. Bulge the top of that. This one I think spun. That's, so that looks like entry right there. That looks like exit right there. And then our third one. Whoa, dang. So entry's somewhere right there. Exit, obviously right there. And here's our fourth one. Gah, opened it wide up. Looks like entry there and just ripped this whole side out. Looks like, well you can't tell now, but there's a hole there too. So it looks like it, or maybe that's the exit. I don't know, it definitely passed through. And went to our fifth one there. And doesn't look like it, yeah, so it just skimmed it. It hit it like this, and looks like it carried on. Or maybe it hit it like that and carried on, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna go with uh, five. It broke five. Let's shoot a really, really, really powerful gun. Next up! 
We're shooting the Dragon off, the 7.62 x 54 r It's a giant round, a sniper round, big bullet going very fast. We have a long barreled gun, so should have lots of speed. Uh, oh, and since we're shooting a sniper round, I better go ahead and check windage. Three miles out of the northeast. Perfect. Let's do it. <clears throat> Parched. <sighs> okay, that'll help. All right, going at the pudding. I got it. One. There's a the little hole there. Oh yeah, it blew up. Man, it really doesn't do much on the first one. That's crazy. But the second one is over here and got super exploded, which means that round is probably still going pretty fast, but now going crooked. You can see where it caught it right here and then just peeled that metal back. That's number two. I don't even know what happened on, okay, I'm, I'm going for it for you guys. Oh, it's just, it's just dented? What? There's a big dent here, big flat spot. Crazy. So it's like the faster we get, the less we penetrate, if you know what I mean. Nothing on the uh, fourth can. So the third can has a big dent. The fourth can has nothing. It's quite simple. There's only one rule in the Demolition. You don't tell Mayor. Welcome to Demolition Ranch. You guys keep asking. 